March 9th, 2020. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Holly, will you call the roll, please? Gilroy? Yes. Roland? Here. Smith? Here. Fizzer? Here. Ballinger? Here. Wives? Here. Rhines? Here. All right, I'm looking for approval of this evening's agenda. If there's no changes that anybody is looking to I'd like to make. to make an approval of tonight's agenda for the Monday, March 9th, 2020 City Council meeting. Thank you. Can I support Second. that? Second. Thank you, Dan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have an opportunity for our audience participation with a maximum of five minutes per presentation. I do not see anybody in the audience. All right. Uh, it looks like we were supposed to have a presentation from the Williamson Red Cedar Garden Club, Carol Granger, and we did receive a uh, very nice uh, handout on our desk in front of us. So I would just uh, suggest that you all read that um, at your leisure, and if there's any questions, uh, we can reach out to Carol, and I'm sure that um, she would get back with us. Moving on, we have the council meeting minutes of February 24, 2020. Were there any questions, any changes that needed to be made? All right, I'm looking for a motion to approve those council meeting minutes. I make a motion to approve the, the minutes as <clears throat> Thank you, Dan. Do I have support? Support. Thank you, Noah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Noah, we have accounts payable for this evening. Okay, I had a chance to review uh, the accounts payable. And I would like to make the motion to approve uh, check 7293 dated 2-21-2020 through check 72962 dated 2-28-2022. Mm -hmm. And then no, the additional ones, no, I'm going to keep going. Oh, okay. I'm All right. Keep going because there's, <laughs> there's another page. All right. And then also approve. Oh. Through check 72976 dated 228-2022 and the total of $600,241.57. And are there any questions that would like to be asked about the accounts payable? The only question I had was on the road salt. There's three separate ones. Um, I take it those are for three separate deliveries or yes. is it different? Because one appears to be on two to be on the same day and the other one on a separate day. Yes. Is that pre buying for next season? Uh, actually, it's the late season for okay. this year. Um, you don't know how yep. much more the snow comes, but uh, we got into some of that. Hopefully, we don't need to get into any more and it'll just stay in the barn for next year. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. All right. Thank you, Noah. We need a second on that. Second. Thank you. Uh, Holly, will you call the roll, please? Wise? Yes. Grimes? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Rowland? Yes. Smith? Yes. Bizzard? Yes. Ballinger? Yes. All right. Moving right along to action items. Our first item this evening is the Miller Canfield engagement letter for the Bond Council Services. Corey. Thank you. Thank you. So this item was before you at the last meeting, mm -hmm. and it was tabled. Um, do the letter not discussing compensation if the bond ballot goes forward and is not passed. And I had said that my understanding was that there was no charge. Mm -hmm. After the tabling and talking to Mike Canfield, I was mistaken. Uh, there is a charge for that word in the event it does not um, pass. And so they've added that language. It's on the third page toward the bottom of their fees. Um, they've offered a not to exceed price of $2,500. Mm -hmm. And that assumes that they would not be asked to come to a city council meeting, uh, which I do not anticipate that to be needed, uh, given how much we've discussed that. Um, so if council desires to uh, move forward with requesting the bond language be drafted uh, in, in a formal manner that would be presented to council, uh, we would look for a motion to move this forward. Okay. Does anyone have any questions before you regarding this now that we have a little bit more clarity? No? All right, well then I am looking for that motion to move this action forward. I'll make a motion to approve the bond council engagement letter from Miller Canfield. Thank you. I'll support it. Thank you, Noah. Further discussion? Holly, will you call the roll? 
Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Rowland? Yes. Smith? Yes. Bizzard? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. Wise? Yes. All right, thank you. Our second action item is the DPW van and cargo shelving purchase. Scott. Uh, in your packet, you should find a memo uh, regarding the, the cargo van purchase. And we had budgeted in the capital budget this year for a purchase of up to $35,000. The van itself is $34,062. Um, as a part of these purchases, we evaluate the duties and uses of the vehicles. And I did throw some photos in there. I don't know if you guys have the color copies or if they're black and white. but. The existing van, um, the back supports where the springs are, and the bed have all rusted through, and the springs have popped up now through the <laughs> floor of the van, uh, making it. Yeah, we've gotten every ounce of use out of this thing if we can. Sure. Um, but part of that's caused by part of the use of this thing, and that's when when they come around town during the winter time with the salting there's um, small salters that are used to do the walks around City Hall and other places around. Um, so in taking a look at that, uh, the 2006 Chevy, we had a couple years ago put a flatbed on there and it has a coating on that and we're looking at putting like a topper on that through the winter time so that we can multi-purpose that use, mm -hmm. keep the salt out of the van, but then we want to equip the van with um, the parts for like meter change outs and water main repairs and things like that. So mm -hmm. what we're asking for is the um, there's a cargo area insert that goes in the back of the van for six thousand and sixty three dollars. Mm -hmm. um, that would then be an increase to what was budgeted of five thousand one hundred twenty five. Okay. Um, but also note that when we sold the factor truck this year that that income wasn't budgeted for. So that we have what was that six Sixty-six thousand fifty dollars that wasn't budgeted for us in right. this year. So, okay. if we had realized that that request would have been there, we would have asked for that in the planning budget. All right. Any questions on yeah. that? I do have one question. Is the van that you're specking out? I thought I saw something here that you guys would pull a trailer with mowers and things like that. So yes. Is this, this one to be capable of handling that? It is. Okay. It is. It's still a 2500, which has the right okay. size and capacity for that. So it has. it's going to have multi-use, different things during different seasons, mm -hmm. but pretty much in use most of the time. Okay. Could you put that line X in the inside of that? Or yes. I think we're... We'll probably do that anyways with okay. that. When we get these new vehicles, we line next them, but we usually put it in with their, our maintenance budget. Okay. Are you getting any money for the scrap of the old Dodge? We'll <laughs> do what we can on it, yeah. <laughs> you know, that could be the motor You usually yeah. do. You usually figure out a way to, you know. I don't see that in your mind. I'm really going to try and get some We did really, really well in the factory. That got yeah. a lot more than I thought we would. So. Yeah. Any other questions for Scott regarding this? I'm looking for that motion to move this action forward. <clears throat> Make a motion to hold on, where I go. To approve to approve the DPW van and cargo shelving purchase. Tim, do we need to itemize right. the three I line items? Do, I think you can do one, two, and three because it's all the same thing. Okay. So I think you just read the subject line. If you don't want to read yep. the action line, yep. so it's one, two, and three. Yep. Okay, let me re amend that. Make a motion to approve the purchase of the DPW van and cargo shelving, uh, authorizing uh, actions one, two, and three. Okay. In the letters, March 5th, uh, 2020. Okay. Second. All right, thank you. Any other, do you want it read or I think we might want to have yeah. uh, the, the amounts the amount, mentioned okay. in there yeah. uh, for the purchase of the van. So, number the, one. Number one would be the authorization not to exceed $34,062. Mm -hmm. uh, number two would be the authorization for the shelving not to exceed $6,063. And then uh, amend, the amend to the cap, uh, budget for the capital outlay, the DPW equipment, increase of $5,125. Thank you. And we had a Still support from, from Gene. Any other further discussion? No? 
Holly, will you call the roll, please? Gilroy? Yes. Roland? Yes. Smith? Yes. Bizzard? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Rines? Yes. All right, moving along, we did not have any discussion items. Moving along to 11, which is our correspondence received, you see there we have the 2019 Annual Planning Commission Report, Asset Management, Plan Approval Correspondence, and WA Correspondence. And I would like to recognize that Carol Granger is here from the Williamson Garden Club. And so if you'd like to, I know that you wanted to uh, speak to us and share some information with us, and we got your report. Thank okay. you so much. <coughs> Well, my name is Carol Granger, and um, I apologize. I respect your time. I promise not to take more than just a couple minutes of your time. I gave you a written report. Um, my speaker didn't show up, so that's why I'm late, and he's still not there, so okay. we moved business ahead so we could rearrange our agenda tonight. Um, I brought a couple more things for you, and you can just... Uh, look at these after your meeting. Okay. These are things that the Garden Club wanted to share with you. One of the sheets is really um, a list of contributions that we've made from the beginning of time till 1998 or something like that. And of course last year we contributed the boxwoods mm -hmm. and we continue to do that. <clears throat> so I wanted to just make a statement that really our city, um, uh, we do better when we are um, beautified, and the reason is is because trees and gardens contribute to the increase of local appeal, and the trees play an important role in increasing rural, urban bio, uh, biodiversity, providing plants and animals with a favorable habitat and food protection. After I came back from the National um, uh, Wildflower uh, Conference, I was so geeked because Williamson was on the right track. The Williamson is really on the right track because of what they're doing in the park and what they did on the landscaping there with the wildflowers with wild type. And um, I wanted to make note that the mature tree can absorb up to 150 kgs of CO2 per year. And as a result, trees play an important role in climate change mitigation. Uh, especially in cities with high levels of pollution and trees can improve the air quality and make cities healthier places to live. I won't read the whole thing because I have written it out for you, but I mean the value that we add here to the city. Uh, one of the conference uh, breakouts was on uh, taking the nature pill instead of a chill pill, you know, <laughs> and that 15 minutes out in nature under a tree can reduce your blood pressure as much as 21%. And that is a study that's done by the University of Michigan. They actually had um, a select number of subjects. I think there was 95 subjects. They sent them out and sat them underneath the tree and there was an improved difference in the saliva, how much serotonin <coughs> is in your system and how much your blood pressure drops. And so if we can keep our city beautiful and natural, we'll be doing ourselves a favor as keeping our community healthy. Great. Now the Garden Club would like to continue to uh, do things for the city, but one of the things that I brought to Corey's attention was the gazebo. Mm -hmm. And I'll drop off there is just saying that we do have a little bit of cash that the Garden Club has said that they will contribute a, a, an amount, a fair mm -hmm. amount, we also can get a $5,000 grant if you choose to replace that gazebo. It's The floor is rotting on it. It's okay. becoming, maybe not this year, but it will be a safety hazard for you. So, But we know that that's a picture stop for everybody here in town. Mm -hmm. So however we can create partnerships, um, whether it's with the city or other organizations, we would like to look at that. Um, the contribution from the Garden Club would be to um, do a one-time contribution, something that doesn't take ongoing efforts on our part. Mm -hmm. We are taking the city sign uh, flower box yeah. for you, yeah. and so we've got three members assigned to help with that this year. Yeah. So if you have any questions for me, 
Well, Carol, I think the Garden Club does an amazing job throughout the entire city. I know you do the depot area, mm -hmm. the existing gazebo that's there. In fact, I've seen pictures of people that have gotten married in that gazebo. Mm -hmm. So it is a very, very prominent place in our, in our community. And then, you know, the planter's box is downtown. You do a fantastic job. The whole you. entire, you know, Garden Club should be commended for the, their efforts that they put in. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Carol regarding her report? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Carol. Very much. Thank you so and much. I appreciate the time to make this annual report to you. All right. Thank you. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. I'm going to move right along. Uh, we have department head reports. Corey, would you like to add anything to your report? Yeah, just a couple quick things um, that are going to be coming soon. So we've been working with the board of sewing drones, which runs the farmers market, on a new agreement. Um, the original agreement was two years, and. Um, that expired at the end of the 2019 season. Yeah. So I do expect that'll be coming at the March 23rd meeting. Um, those talks have been really positive uh, with them. And then another thing that's coming, I, I don't want to go into too much detail, but just to give a heads up, um, Scott and I have been working through a, a question about how to spend the last bit of funds that are left from the 2017 capital improvement bond, mm -hmm. um, which was designated to the water account. So after the East, Mid East Middle South Mullet Street project, um, there's going to be about twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars left in that fund, um, which can be designated to the water. And so we've been kicking around, you know, where would we get the biggest bang for a buck? Because it's not a huge amount for a major project, and we've keyed in on the east end of town on Grand River, where we have a couple of uh, issues that we've been looking at um, pertaining to uh, some of the, the the fact that it's not looped. And we have some water uh, fire or fire hydrants that are um, needing to be replaced or abandoned, and so we've been working through that. And we just wanted to give you a heads up that that's something that we want to bring forward um, as a potential item to consider. Uh, that was not planned, but that's because we didn't know if we'd have that that amount left from that 2017 bond. Um, so we will have definitely a lot more information about what that's going to look like, um, as well as uh, requests coming forward. And then the last thing, I uh, just want to note that over the last two meetings with the Planning Commission, we've been going through more ordinance amendments. I had a note in the report, uh, but just want to note that since we had a lot of change-ups uh, with Jeff coming up to Council, and we had a couple other uh, resignations, we have three new members, we have a full board, and um, I know some of you obviously were at the meeting, but I've been really pleased with that board's makeup right now and uh, the discussion that we've been having. We're dealing with a lot of you know, things that to, to a normal person might not be fun. We talk about garages and decks and fences and driveways, and they've really made it, I guess, fun to talk about and come up with some tweaks to our zoning ordinance. Um, so they will have a public hearing in April, and then we would anticipate that those changes would come to council for consideration. Um, but just want to thank everybody, if, if anybody had a role in filling, helping to fill that board. It's been really good to work with them. That's all I have. Yeah, they've done amazing work, and it's it's things that need to be taken care of and cleaned up. Mm -hmm. All right, moving along, we've got Chief. Nothing to report. All right. Um, does anyone have any reports that they'd like to offer up from their uh, from their boards that they sit on? Um, well, I, so from the, the the planning commission side, I just want to yeah. give gigantic kudos to the city staff. I mean, they they prepared. Yeah. Heavily and gave us a lot of stuff to chew on and did a really good job. Yeah, you're missing all the fun now, Jack. <laughs> all right, anyone else? All right, going once, going twice. All right, audience participation, uh, maximum five minutes presentation. Um, no one in the audience. I'm going to go around the table. Uh, Mr. Weiss, council member comments. Uh, if you haven't looked at Dan Ryan's, has done an awesome job with Red Sea Jubilee postings. Yes. Uh, most posts I've ever seen for Red Jubilee. This Jubilee, and hopefully this summer it could be uh, bigger than before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, good job, man. Well, that Thanks was a stuff. great uh, segue into Mr. Ryan's. Would you like to say anything? Um, I guess we can give a quick update on Jubilee. Following that, we've got uh, a lot of things we're working on for this year. Some stuff that. Uh, we're close to being able to announce, but not quite yet. But uh, one that a lot of has a lot of people excited. It hasn't been around since 
as long as I can remember, apparently it used to be a real big thing. It was a beard and mustache contest called the Brothers of the Brush. Um, Ron Wright has agreed to take that on with, and he's bringing in a couple other barbers from town to, to do that. That's one that we started asking people that have been around a long time, what, what, would, what do you want us to bring back? Well, three or four people all said, Brothers of the Brush. What is that? <laughs> but apparently it was a very popular thing back in the day. Um, so we're bringing that back and we're, uh, the Chamber of Commerce has taken on uh, Wednesday with bringing in a lot more events for the kids in addition to the kids parade starting at 2 o'clock and running until 6 when we start with the lineup for the, for the kids parade. So that's going to be a big addition and a, a lot of things like that. Uh, we're hoping to, to add a lot more things and we're close to being able to announce a few other things we have coming but not quite yet. The uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention was for, for Scott, I got a great compliment uh, during our last snow event. I work with Jill Cutshaw, who used to be uh, the postmaster here in town, and she's now the treasurer at the township. And she came up to me after <coughs> the middle of that snow, and she goes, you know, as long as I've worked here, Williamson has always done the best job with clearing our streets, and it's... She's like, I was just driving through town doing my deposits, and I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, we just absolutely loved it. And she's like, it's never changed. So I wanted to pass that compliment on to you guys. Excellent. Thank you. Noah. I'm good for you. All right. Mr. Bizzard. I'm good. All right. Jane. I'm good. Mr. Rollman. I am as well. All Thank right. You. I just wanted to commend Dan uh, and, and the whole Red Cedar Jubilee group. Um, they are retooling. It's, it's going through a a regrowth this year, I think, and um, I understand too that there's going to be some opportunity for sponsorships for some of the events, so if you are interested in sponsoring something during Jubilee Week, I would suggest getting hold of Dan or somebody on the Jubilee uh, board, and he's done an amazing job, uh, like Mr. Weiss said, uh, promoting it online through social media, and um, so I'm excited about this year's <coughs> event. and. It's just a, a gearing up towards next year's 50th anniversary. So you guys will do a great job, and next year will be even better. So I'm excited about that. Um, the time has changed. Spring is here. But it's still uh, no parking on the city streets from 2 to 5 until the end of this month, because we never know when Michigan is going to change up for us. So just a reminder regarding that. But again, our DPW staff has done amazing all winter long. Um, and that is really all I have to say this evening. They're um, getting uh, Holly uh, very quickly, election, primary day, tomorrow, tomorrow. 7 so 7 a.m. Okay, 7 till when? 8 p.m. 8 p.m. So that is why uh, we are going to go ahead and call this meeting adjourned for this evening.